Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode here on my YouTube channel. Uh, happy whatever today whatever today is because I don't know when I'll be releasing this video. I'm thinking I'm gonna continue to try and stick to Fridays. This was what I was doing for a few months and I just like Fridays. I was watching this Gary V video and I'm a fan of his although he can seem kind of obnoxious but one of the things he says is like if you are waiting for Friday you're not living your life right which is supposed to be like depressingly motivational <laughs> which worked um so anyway i i do like fridays i wanted to try and just stick to a day so hopefully this will be out um second week of january if all goes well um happy january still so today i wanted to go into a hot topic which is on a lot of artists minds and just probably most people but it's five tips for painting on a budget um i have for years been stuck working just painting on my parents floor so i ended up painting on the carpet floor a lot of our tiny little rental apartment and um it's not ideal but definitely you know didn't stop me from painting so when i first started painting and doing art i was painting uh using acrylic i would just use your basics the actual uh brand name basics i don't know if it's like a liquitex brand but they were the least expensive and i've been painting with that for a really long time um, so I wanted to touch base or kind of go over a few tips that I have for painting on a budget. Um, my first tip is a little maybe unorthodox, but the idea is to reach out to brands that you like. So if you like, and I, I've only done this a few times, so I don't have a ton of experience with it, but if there's a brand that you love uh chances are and uh, please apologize as per usual my dog mellows in the background making all kinds of noises um it was really cute today he's got a cold which isn't cute but it's adorable to like see his little boogies coming out and like <laughs> oh he's so cute anyway um uh the i the concept behind reaching out to brands is that uh they still want to have a good uh customer facing relationship so even though you know like usually people that have a little bit higher following will be able to work out some sort of sponsorship or a brand ambassador with a with a uh, some sort of paint or paint art supply company it doesn't hurt to reach out Whatever the amount of following you have, it doesn't hurt to reach out. Say you've got a few thousand, but you don't feel like it's a lot. It may be enough for them to have the representation. Um, it depends on your artwork. It depends on how you align with the brand, but it doesn't hurt to reach out. Remember that a closed mouth does not get fed. So I've reached out to some places that sometimes they don't respond at all. Sometimes they say no thank you, or sometimes it works out. So that is my first kind of um tip is to reach out to brands and worst case scenario is probably either they say no or they'll send you just some freebies if you let them know how much you love the brand that you're aligned say in or if you're say you you're in a crunch most of the time they're going to help you out they will send you something and just you know remember to be appreciative if they if they send you stuff shout them out on your instagram let them know the story that they were nice enough to comp you some stuff to try out and just show your appreciation that's the what you have to remember is these brands need content so if you're able to supply them with good content that is gold to them every brand has a marketing budget so make sure that you know that you're taking advantage of that if you cannot uh establish a sponsorship relationship you might still be able to get some freebies and again 
be appreciative because it you know and no brand has to give you anything for free if they're willing to that's a nice thing um the other thing so another another tip is that if you're truly on a budget which i have been before believe me and still am um don't be so don't be so bogged down by the idea of getting top quality products um if you're really in a bind you'll make it work i've heard of artists that buy walmart brand paint and that their work is great so you know a lot of it has to do i think i think a lot of um maybe beginner artists or people that don't are trying to get into a new medium and i am guilty of this myself is that you try and look and find almost like detective work like web sleuths try and figure out exactly what another artist that you admire is using because they obviously have to be using something secretive because they're so good the the hard part to understand is that if you hand that artist just a number two pencil they'll still be just as good um you have to remember that a lot of it is just your own skill set so you i could probably still paint with walmart brand paint and produce a decent product it's not going to be ideal and it's going to be a little harder to get there which is the reason you want to use better paint but it's still possible um a lot of it is a lot of with a lot of the thing with working or a lot of the benefits with working with better brands is the consistency but if you're on a budget you know you're you're gonna do the best you can with that walmart paint um also keep in mind that you know some of my favorites like gamblin has a student grade paint so you know if you're not able to afford the top of the brand professional professional grade of paint which is more expensive most brands are going to have a student grade paint which is more affordable a little bit less probably concentrated but still really good quality and good paint so again don't get bogged down by trying to get top quality stuff especially if you're beginning and you're on a budget get what you can and work with it you, you could get just like cheap pencils like believe me it took me a while to work up to the materials that i've got now and it's still expensive um you know every time i go to our our town art store i spend a hundred dollars you know it's not it's not a cheap endeavor so other thing i mean i'm you know i'm a huge prude when it comes to art materials i squeeze very little paint out and use the hell out of it so be be fruit be very um deliberate with your usage don't be wasteful if you're on a budget in general don't be wasteful um i i don't know i just i'm i'm all for i remember i watched this documentary on this artist that would do these posters i forget his name i'm so sorry i can't remember but he used to do like the star wars posters and do all those hand-drawn really iconic posters and he was killing it making a ton of money but he was so he had he had struggled for so long that even into his like really su successful part of his life he would gr um, sharpen his little pencils till they were little nubbins because it was so like he was so not into get being wasteful with his paint um another point I've got five. I think I'm on number three. Is save your money. So here in Santa Rosa, we have a little art store called Riley Street, and I think twice a year they have these huge sales where they'll throw a bunch of uh, brushes in a bucket, and a lot of these more expensive brushes are only a dollar. They're trying to clean up for the new inventory coming in, so pretty much once a year they have this around the corner line of hundreds of people that will go for these sales now if you're smart what you do is you save your money and wait as long as you can because at that time you're going to get the best deals on canvases on brushes and then the whole store i believe is an extra like 15 percent off but the idea is to wait your whole year and stock up that that at that time for the rest of the year so that you're always getting it at a discounted rate um 
Another thing at those stores is don't be too shy to ask for the professional artist discount, to ask for the student discount, to ask for whatever type of discount. It doesn't hurt to ask because if you don't ask, you're for sure getting a no. Um, but yeah, what I would suggest is, you know, maybe make a list of what you are in need of and then save the money for that. Put aside a couple hundred dollars. Uh, you'd probably want to set aside maybe $200 for the year, $100. And once a year, a back to school sale or anything along those lines, wherever your local art store is having their big sale of the year, make sure you go and stock up on your part, on your uh, materials then. Um, another thing, oh, and then obviously you can remember, you know, the Black Friday, Cyber Monday sales too. It might be roughly around the time of year. If you don't have a local art store to go to, that might be the best bet for you because those are going to be your sales. So remember to save your money and then stock up that time of the year. Also, this is, has nothing to do, also, this has nothing to do with, uh, saving or doing something on a budget, but if there is anything that you love like a sketchbook or a brand of a pencil that may go out of sale because you know the there's so few um there's very there's like big hitters when it comes to art uh like art supplies and then there's always like a bunch of smaller uh, companies that are popping up or smaller companies that have been around, but you never know how long they'll be around for. So if there's something that you really love, for example, there was a moleskin. When moleskin first came out, the pages had this beautiful parchment yellow ivory color to them that they no longer have. Now the, uh, the paper is all white. So... Um, I would suggest, you know, if I had been smart and knew that that was going to happen, I would have stocked up with like 10 different moleskin sketchbooks because now they're nowhere to be found. So that's just, that's a side bonus tip that I would recommend. If there is a sketchbook that you really stoked about, just try and stock up with as much as you can because you don't know when they'll possibly run out or just get discontinued. Um, so my number, let me see how many I have. One, two, three, my number four. Four tip of this video is to go to estate sales. So my husband Josh and I, we love going to estate sales because they can get really weird. I just love going into people's houses. Um, but estate sales are just super fun. Garage sales, like try and figure out your local. We go almost, we were going every weekend for um, some time. We've gotten really busy recently, but they, you find some really awesome art books. You find great tools, uh, great art supplies. We've found a full bucket of like watercolors. You can find brushes, you can find art books. It does not hurt to go um, to estate sales. Recently we went to an estate sale here in the Bay Area. It was in a city called Marin, I believe. Marin or Napa, close, to, uh, close by here in the Sonoma County Bay Area. And we ended up going to an architect's who I believe had just passed away his home. And there was just a ton of art supplies. There was really cool architect drawers. Like they're these really heavy ones that push in and out and they're massive, but they're really useful. And um, they, he had a ton of art books, a ton of paint. You know, it, it does not hurt to go to these places because you'll get the most bang for your buck. They'll be used obviously, but there's nothing wrong with that. Um, we've found really cool uh, like ceramic woodworking tools as well um, but that is always a great find whenever you find something like you know you you could get lucky and get like an easel or something like that there's also a lot of you know a lot of people will pick up art for a short amount of time and then you know they'll they'll figure out that it's not for them and then toss everything out they've spent a few hundred dollars kind of setting themselves up to try and get into art and then they don't do it again so go to estate sales and garage sales it is a gold mine when it comes to artwork because people are tossing stuff all the time my number five is to ask for art supplies as gifts for you know whatever your birthday your christmas 
um, whatever your holiday may be, ask for it as gifts and try and get specific as if you can. Uh, again, because you know, artwork is, is powerful. Art supplies are expensive. If you can get people to get you exactly what you want and what you need, then it's just that much cooler. Um, that's probably the lamest tip out of the group. <laughs> Some of us don't have people to give us gifts and stuff like that, but if you can, uh, I don't know if you can try and ask for them as a gift um, I also had it here as a bonus note which is also kind of another lame tip but just something that went into my head is to try and make your own products I've actually never tried this but I've seen people making their own watercolor and it looks awesome I actually don't really paint with watercolor I use gouache most of the time so it hasn't really drawn to me but the the process looks really really fun and um what they do is that they take a pigment because you can buy any paint as a pigment and just add whatever you know like the resin and the oil or whatever that you need to create what type of uh, medium you'll be working with but i've seen people do it with watercolor and it just looks like so much fun and so cool and i have an old acquaintance that makes his own oil paint and I believe he even mixes, his, he makes his own pigment off out of uh, just um, eco-friendly materials. So if you can get into that and you've got the time and resources to do that, that's huge. Because it's also a selling point, it's just cool. Like the fact that you make your own paint, like why not? That yeah, people would love that. Um, and then you have just like your, your basic stuff that you can do like fuse coffee I've seen people do that or wine or whatever can kind of leave pigment behind um I we went to the MoMA here in San Francisco and one of my favorite paintings is this I forget what it's called but I and I don't know I think it's from India but there's part uh pieces of elephant poop in the painting and elephant hair and people just love it and eat that stuff up like not literally eat it up but they just love the idea that it's elephant poop people people be crazy people be crazy um anyway i hope that that was helpful in any way shape or form to somebody thank you guys for listening if you've come this far you guys are amazing uh thank you to my patrons i appreciate your patience with me and your your I, my patrons are just so cool because on a bad day they'll uplift me and just always make me feel great so thank you guys i truly appreciate you if you guys want to check out my patreon page you're welcome to you don't have to i'll have it linked down below and please remember to stay sexy and don't get murdered okay bye All these blessings got me on my knees. Feeling wavy with me on the screen. Yo, if you riding with us, get the keys. Like, is it difficult? No, it's a breeze. It's a breeze, boy, I told you it's a breeze. Yo, it's a breeze, boy, I told you it's a breeze. Yo, it's a breeze, boy, I told you it's a breeze. I'm up in the VIP and it's sun on GLD. Yeah, look, Paulie sent me what he sent me thinking he go first. I ain't tellin' beats like this can make my ego worse Cause it's a breeze, we ain't do it for the cheese Make you freeze like watching your first California burrito burst <laughs> Ain't a tourist, man, listen what the chorus say I just came to do whatever, got to the, the order Stay down for the tours, lay down on my door Wait, I ain't with the story, faith. You should stop ignoring, babe Some of these conversations, I swear that they be so odd Ask if I'm a minister, I told them that's my home squad Meaning that's my my home job, meaning that I'm home first. Yes, I own my own job. I know that makes it so hurt. Ain't been to a home church, but I feel like my home's church. Showed up to my church home. I guess to do their homework. <laughs> Look, I could not be covert. God, he did it all. He set me whole and made my soul work. So all these blessings got me yeah. on my knees. On my knees. Feeling wavy with me, yeah. On the screen, on screen. Yo, if you riding with us, yeah. Get the keys, get the, get the like. Is it difficult? No, it's a breeze. It's a breeze, boy. I told you it's a breeze. 